I won't stop till I hear him say Manual data management tasks done by many intermediaries. You know, this data challenge, um, you know, we can surmise is why some of the estimates for total tokenized assets by the end of the decade are so low. Because going from long practiced analog processes to a digital process and digital asset is just hard. You're going to tell us how you're going to make it easy. But when, when I say, when I say low, I'm referring to what may sound bold to some, and I think it did when it was published, but one of the headlines, you know, estimates was, you know, uh, 16 trillion in tokenized assets by 2030. And people said, well, 16 trillion, that represents less than 2% of the total asset value across public and private markets. Contrast that to what we're hearing in the market from asset managers. Uh, some of whom have ambition to tokenize 15% of their assets in the next few years and well beyond that percentage by the end of the decade. So the 16 trillion, gosh, that's, that's a good start, but we've got to do better. Okay. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another CyberX video breakdown. In today's video, we're going to be jumping down the rabbit hole and some fundamentals. I'm going to be sharing some tweets with you all. I thought that I'd start this video off positive. 16 trillion dollars ladies and gentlemen as peanuts compared to what the potential future of tokenizing real assets has in this market space as you all heard some of these major investors plan on tokenizing 15 percent of their assets he mentioned 16 trillion dollars how people are blown away by that and how that is still a small number so I thought that I play that off first for you guys to give you all a positive perspective onto what it is that we're going to be talking about in today's video, but we're going to be jumping down the rabbit hole first, talking about the retail herd mindset, and then we're going to be going into some fundamentals. I'm going to be giving you guys a little bit of a warning that we've been talking about for quite some time here on the CyberX platform, which is getting your crypto off exchanges. I'm going to be sharing some fundamentals that were shared to us in the CyberX research PDF chat that aren't really being talked about in the mainstream, interesting to say the least. Um, so first, let's go down the rabbit hole on some of these tweets. Now, we've been talking about a potential pullback opportunity in the crypto space. I even shared my bearish targets as to where it is that I'm going to be implementing more capital into the market to our CyberX students in our private group chat. If you guys want access to our private group chat or our mentorship program, remember the link can be found in the description below where you guys can go and enroll in our mentorship program. If you have any questions before doing that, you can always reach out to me via our customer support email, schedule a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call with me and meet me face-to-face. -face. So let's jump over to the Twitter space. We see right here, I told you guys, again, tweeting you all at a top. I try to give you guys the realest information. Nothing that I constitute here is financial advice, but we try to provide value to you all. And I want to show you all what it is that I'm talking about in the form of that value, giving you guys warnings. So I said to you all, people will get the opportunity to buy utility-driven assets at a discount, again, from their recent price pumps. And still, people will be too scared to invest into something that has long-term value that will revolutionize our future global cross-border payment system. We can see down here, I tweeted out XRP, XDC, XLM, HBAR, LCX, Casper, Quant. You guys get the drift, right? <clears throat> utility. There's multiple other utility-driven assets. These are just the ones that I do research on and make YouTube videos on um, to the general public. There's multiple other cryptocurrency assets out there that are utility-driven. Again, take it upon yourself to do your own personal research. I'm not telling you guys to go out there and buy these utility-driven assets. I'm simply here as an influencer providing value in the form of information that is already readily available to the general public. Then we're going to go over here to this tweet. I even put out to you guys, the BIS literally has a document that talks about how retail investors lose money and buy tops. This is why we teach our students how we avoid chasing the market, ignoring natural impulse of human behavior, and we capitalize on our ability not to chase the shiniest object and instead master our emotions by becoming patient, less emotional, and more of a reactive trader. And you guys can see that BIS document right here saying retail investors have chased prices and most have lost money. So I want to take your attention over to the charts real fast before we go into detail on these fundamentals that I have for you all. Taking your attention to two tweets that I put out to the general public, I really like to show individuals on the Twitter space and the YouTube space that 
following us on Twitter and follow us, following us on YouTube can be beneficial. Now, obviously, of course, trade with your own opinion and biases. However, we have given multiple warning signs out there that prices are either going to pump or prices are going to pull back. You guys can see tweeting out at the top on February 13th. I told you all crypto is going to bleed. No one can stop it from happening. Best thing as an investor to do at this point is accept the risk you're currently exposed to in case prices drop and keep cash reserves on the side in order to implement capital at a further discounted price. And you guys can see I tweeted that right out at the top on February 13th, 2023. Then right here, as prices continue to decline, that is when I told you guys that people will have the opportunity to buy utility-driven assets at a discounted price again. So if you don't follow us on Twitter, that link is in the description down below of our YouTube videos. I just wanted to show you all that following us on Twitter, we provide value ahead of the curve. All right. Now, I want to take your attention to one of the CypherX students who has his own YouTube channel, Mr. Man. Go ahead and follow him on the YouTube space. You guys can go follow him on Twitter as well. His YouTube is attached to his Twitter page. And he and I have both been mentioning to you all a potential black swan event that could be taking place. Now, none of us can predict this black swan event. So we're going to get into that negative side of things real fast. Some things to be cognizant and aware of. Again, your exposure to this market, the crypto market in particular, should always be taken into consideration. I cannot stress enough, ladies and gentlemen, never invest in this up and emerging asset class with money that you're not willing to lose. Do not be putting your mortgage into this asset class. Do not be putting your monthly bills into this asset class. Only invest with money that you are willing to lose in case worse scenario happens and plays out. So let's get into that real fast. Mr. Man, shout out to you. I can't wait to connect with you um, after having been back from my travels and making some interesting content with you, breaking down some PDFs that we find together. So Mr. Man tweeted out, incoming black swan event potentially happening and delisting of stablecoins from Canadian exchanges, the World Bank considers XRP and XLM stablecoins. This is not FUD. This is me as an influencer spreading awareness. <clears throat> Mr. Man tweeted out on February 25th, you guys can see this picture here. Crypto exchanges have 30 days to register with Canadian regulators. His pictures go on to say exchanges must commit to the practice known as segregation and crypto custody and maintain a chief compliance officer under the new rules. They also must adhere to the elimination of leverage trading and halting the sale and holding of stable coins. If you have money sitting in stable coins, I, you know, I can't advise you to do anything with that money, but just consider your risk and your exposure to the market if you have a massive amount of money sitting in stable coins waiting to purchase crypto assets, okay? Maybe potentially think of another route to take or think of how you can deleverage yourself and, and kind of uh, limit your exposure to this market and your risk, right? Again, not financial advice, things you need to do personal research on. And we go on to see a World Bank document, stable coins for cross-border payments, them mentioning that XRP and XLM are stable coins. Now, whether the price in the future of these potential quote unquote stable coins, XRP and XLM, that is a massive debate, is either going to be low or high. Obviously, of course, the majority of individuals think it's going to be high. Very small per percent of individuals think it's going to be low. That is up to a debate and out of my control. I'm here as an influencer again to show you guys again that risk management is the number one and most important thing in this market. Limiting your exposure to this market at the correct time will give you longevity in this market, which again, we tried and attempted to tell people in our tweets, all right? We told you crypto was going to bleed. We also told you people were going to have massive buying opportunities again at discounted prices from recent price pumps that we just experienced, but people don't listen. They won't follow us on Twitter. They won't take into consideration some of the things that we say here at CyberX, and they will aimlessly travel through life losing money because I don't know they're addicted to it. I really truly don't know why. Um, moving on. Okay. This was another article that was put in the Sitegrax private group chat. Um, I, I believe that this is actually a Dutch uh, fundamental, if I'm not mistaken, I could be incorrect. Um, so I had to translate this to English, which is why I'm assuming that there is not a massive coverage of this in the mainstream media here in the United States. But this is interesting. So pay attention to this, especially if you have assets on these exchanges. Russians channel money through crypto exchanges. That is a red flag. Russians in some Russian banks that are subject to sanctions can simply trade digital currencies via the Hubi 
Holy B, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, probably not, and Qcoin crypto exchanges. I've been saying for the longest time that Qcoin is a corrupt crypto exchange. Personally, that is my personal opinion. I've shown you guys in the past how they don't tap into institutionalized liquidity and how in the past they've been subject to money laundering and whatnot. Again, those were in past video breakdowns. But again, red flags are popping up with these crypto exchanges. Just be mindful if you have assets not in cold storage and on crypto assets exchanges, be mindful and potentially seek to potentially deleverage okay, from those crypto exchanges. Not financial advice. Take it upon yourself to do your own research and whatever hard storage wallet you know you seek to invest in. Personally, for me, majority of my crypto is off exchanges. Uh, with that being said, it goes on to say, this is what data analytics Inca Digital specialized in crypto coins says in a report, according to the director, Adam, the exchange may be violating U.S. and European sanctions. Many of the transactions of Russians concern the digital currency Tether as a so-called stablecoin. This is the digital currency that is linked to a real currency and therefore has a fixed value. Tether is widely used by Russians to get money out of the country, says Zarazinsky. It is definitely being used by these two crypto exchanges to provide services to sanctioned Russian banks. That is a red flag to me. Again, I'm here as an influencer just providing you all with this information so that way you all can decide to react accordingly. If you have money in these exchanges or stablecoins in these exchanges, take it upon yourself to do some research and maybe think of limiting your risk exposure. Okay. <clears throat> Moving on. We also saw a red flag article that was released in the CypherX group chat. Binance used customer funds for its own purposes in a move similar to FTX scandal. I've been saying for the longest time, I don't trust Binance. They've been red flagged way, way, way before FTX ever collapsed through money laundering scandals and whatnot. So for me personally, I've never used Binance and I never will use Binance. Um, so here we see Binance use customer deposits for its own undisclosed purposes. These are key highlights. Binance transferred $1.8 in stablecoin collateral to hedge funds, the report says, and also a, sp a spokesperson excuse me, told insiders that Binance has never invested or otherwise deployed user assets without consent under the terms of specific products. So again, I'm not here to spread fun. I'm not saying these exchanges are going to collapse or anything like that. This is me as an influencer, just showing you guys what has been provided to me. This is a transfer of information. You all now have that information. Take it upon yourself to dig further. Okay. <clears throat> Moving on to the happy side of things. We saw an article come out January 11, 2023, the progressive side of the crypto asset market space, which is happening behind the scenes. And as you all heard, the individual... Richard Walker from Bain and Company at the beginning say that this is going to be a long drawn out process. It is hard to do to take everything that was on a paper based financial ecosystem and move it over to a digitalized economy is going to take time. And when you really truly do research, you will come to the realization that this is going to be a drawn out long process. Believe me if you want to believe me if you don't, I don't care at the end of the day. I've done my research and I know the information that I put out to the general public is valuable. And you guys can now see, right, we're in March, which is a month that lawyers, okay, <laughs> James K. Filan, if I'm not mistaken, predicted that the SEC versus Ripple case will be over. Let's see. There's T minus, what, 30 days left until that potentially comes into fruition. And if not, then again, my theory is going to be proven correctly that this is going to be a drawn out process. I cannot stress enough. JP Morgan removing friction from cross-border payments. Interesting, right? When JP Morgan just a couple of uh, months ago was saying that they're not involving themselves in, in cryptocurrencies and that Bitcoin's a scam and get out of crypto and da, da 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 da, we continuously see massive announcements coming out via these major banking institutions utilizing blockchain technology. It says right here, JP Morgan utilizes a full arsenal of technology, including on blockchain data exchange, right? Coming over here, this is an interesting article from Bain & Company. As digital currencies start to embed in the payment system, what role for banks will it play? It goes on to say, key highlights digital currencies hold the promise of programmability and rich data, lower costs, and faster payments. Bank governments and fintechs are beginning to deploy the currencies in different payment situations. We foresee the digital and traditional currencies will coexist. That is massive. It goes on to say, fast emerging digital currencies have the potential to affect 5 to 10% or more of the global payments market by 2030. Bain and Company estimates, central banks, global banks, and digital native fintechs are 
vying to establish their solutions as the standard for this evolution of the payment system. This, this I cannot stress enough, this digital transformation is happening. The people who are patient, the people who understand how long this process is going to take, and the people who see the long-term value of these utility-driven assets will be the ones that come out on top. Also, in my personal opinion, the people that cold storage or use cold storage applications will be the ones that survive long term. Having your money on these exchanges, these hot wallet exchanges that are subject to money laundering and helping sanctioned Russians exchange money, again, will be the ones who are not analyzing their risk properly and are exposing themselves to the devastating effects that this crypto market can have on taking your money. Okay. Last but not least, we also see right here the $20 trillion payment market. This came out last year, September 2022. However, it says right here, the global digital payment market is estimated to reach 20 trillion by 2026. That is only a mere three years away, right? So I thought that I'd end this on a positive note, given the fact that we gave some, uh, <laughs> some tantalizing information here that could have a demoralizing effect on people's perspective of this market long-term, always have a long-term perspective in this up and emerging asset class. I cannot stress enough that will keep you alive in this market to survive later on down the road. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, blessings to you all. As always, do your own personal research. I'm not here telling you to go out and buy cryptocurrencies. Like I said, I've given my bearish targets to the Cyprex students in our private group chat. I will display that message here for you guys so you all can actually physically see, although I will blank out my bearish targets that's specifically for the Cyprex private group chat. If you guys are interested in joining our mentorship program, link is in the description down below where we go into detail over 60 hours of course material on how we approach the market via technical and psychological analysis. As always, blessings. I will see you guys in the next video breakdown. I won't stop till I hear him say. Oh, oh, da, 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 da.